them straight oh, through the gates of barren life. That is preposterous. Why would you let dangerous machines, machines into our own land? You mean the land that honest Osram laborers work tired of and save its government? The land that should you sign the decree? Oh, you that, that damned concession you know decree would be managed by the people who actually Probably live and work on that. Shop looks closed. Yep. Can I still use the workbench? I ain't gonna stop you. Workbench is free if you need to tinker with that gear.
This should be useful. Now I just need to find Aaron and help him clear the bristlebacks. Hey, Mildef. Mildef. I took some of your stew last time I went into the wild. It kept me going for a week. It felt like I could have put a strider in a sleeper hole. Enjoy it while it lasts. Sounds like you're serving up some uh, impressive provisions here. <sighs> Not again. You can have the discount too, but you'll have to come back later. I think you have me confused with someone else. Oven. Didn't send you? No. Oh, my apologies. It's just that his minions won't stop pestering me. <sighs> now I've even worn out my special grill. Since I'm in the midst of a crisis, perhaps you could skip to what it is you wanted? Some of your food? Of course. Are Alvin's people causing you problems? Oh, yeah. They constantly demand my best, but the equipment I need to make my signature dishes isn't built for batch cooking. And don't get me started on the Olven discount they feel so entitled to. And if you refuse? I make meals, no trouble. How did you end up in Chainscape? Heard about a new and upcoming town at the edge of the frontier. Where there's a town, there's a tavern. I was in need of work. So I got myself out here and started cooking. Some of these people had never tasted proper boars and berries stew before. Anyway, next thing I knew, people kept coming back. Guess they liked my food. Or the ale. Your last customer mentioned your cooking really kept him going out in the wild. Where I'm headed, I could use some of that. I would be happy to oblige, especially since you have the decency to ask pleasantly. But... But my special groove griddle is no more. Without it, I can't cook any of my signature dishes. I hate to think what'll happen when I'm forced to refuse Olven or his goons. Even if I already had the right ingredients, there's nothing I could do. Unless you can source me a temporary replacement? What do you need? For the ingredients. A few pieces of decent wild meat, and I'd say a big handful of bitter leaf stems. That'll do. As for the griddle, a corrugated metal panel might suffice until I can have a new one forged. You'd likely find one in a scrounger pile if you follow the river to the northeast. Don't worry, I'll clean it first. <laughs> You'll have no issue finding boars and bitter leaf on your way, assuming you're as much a hunter-gatherer as your clothing suggests. Thanks, Mildef. I'll keep an eye out. So that's what gratitude sounds like. And don't let anyone push you around, okay? If you say so. Ah, hello again. How goes your search? About that. What did you need to make your signature dish? A corrugated metal panel. I can use it until I get another... You could probably... I'll clean it first. And for the dish itself, then I can get cooking. I should be good. Right.
It's an act game. Your mind but about any that tribe role? can enjoy it. What? A famous machine here? Over here. Over here. Honored. Come for that beer after all, eh? Here, sit down. Get a pint in her hand. Wasn't expecting you to swing by. Since when do I do what's expected? Ha! There's that spark. Fire and spit. Uh, fire and spit. <sighs> That's a blast from the bellows. Won't fix the forge, but at least I can forget about my troubles for a while. Like what? Take your pick. We got bodies to bury from the bristlebacks, the work stoppage, Olven grading the gears about his concession decree. Hey! Weapons off the table! Ah, don't listen to me. Nothing a cold brew and knocking some heads together can't fix eventually. So the bristlebacks in the daunt. <laughs> Where did they come from? That's the thing. No one rightly knows. They just showed up one day, rampaging around the valley like they exploded out of a forge. <sighs> Lost some good people. But I heard talk of some vanguards trying to take them down. Did they come through here? Stopped by briefly for supplies. Olvind was none too pleased. Won't be able to crank it to his advantage once the bristlebacks are gone. But how could bristlebacks and the daunt help Olvind? Two words. Concession decree. Since no one knows where the bristlebacks came from, Olvind has taken to blaming the Karja for him. He's hoping to dig up enough old resentments to get a strike going until the concession's signed. This is just his latest attempt. He's been trying to rile up the workers since the day he rolled into town. And people actually believe him? Lots of folks suffered at the hands of the Mad King during the Red Raids. Give him half a reason, they'll blame the Karja for anything. Ah, damn Karja slavers. I thought you'd be back in Freeheap. Well, after the big battle at Meridian, I went back. But realized it was running smooth. Didn't need me. Heard about the rebuilding out at Baron Light. Figured they could use another hammer. Been scraping by ever since. You could always leave. And go back east? Nah. I ain't one to leave a lit forge. Besides, someone's gotta be a squeaky wheel for the workers around here. So about Olvind. Around here, everything's about Olvind. How'd he end up in charge? He got here early, like a squirrel smelling a fat nut. He knew rebuilding barren light would need stone and timber. So he jangled purses all over Mainspring, getting investors to front claims on anything in the Daunt that might be worth a damn. Thing is, all the bankers back home know that this is Karja land, and the Sun King can revoke those claims at any time. That's why he's desperate for the Magistrate to sign off on a concession decree. This concession decree, what is it exactly? And how would it help Olvind? It's pig diddle, that's what. A writ that would put all Osram claims in the Daunt under Osram law, even though they're on Karja land. It would mean that any existing ore, stone, and timber claims couldn't be revoked by the Karja. No more risk, no more hesitation for investors back in the claim to pour in the shards and expand their business. And since Olvind has a stake in all those claims, it would make him richer than a scrapper in a junk heap. Not to mention Chainscrape would become an Osra municipality, so he could buy enough votes to call himself an elder man. He's a sly old badger, I'll give him that. Figures if he keeps up the pressure, eventually the Magistrate will sign. Well, I, uh... I have to be going. Thanks for the drink, Petra. I'm glad I stopped by. Anytime, Flame Hair. Sit down for a game of strike.
What do you want, Olvut? Some kind of payment? My dear magistrate, you think I can be bought? If you want that whistle blown, all you have to do is have your soldiers remove the bristlebacks and sign the concession decree. Face it, what other choice do you have? <clears throat> Hi. Savior, what auspicious timing. Might we discuss a matter of importance to the Sundom? We might. Later. Very well. I shall be waiting. So, the Savior herself. Walloper of Durval, gutter of youth. Uh, maybe. I've heard many tales of your beauty and heroics, my fierce lady warrior. Olfant Freehold, at your service. So, what could have dragged you away from the fine silks and wine of Meridian to this smudge of a settlement? Your saviorly attention must be needed elsewhere. I'm here for the embassy and- The embassy? Why, well, uh, by the forge. Ah. Greater gears for greater matters. Guess that means you'll be moving on. Once I've dealt with any problems around here that need my... saviorly attention. Ah, the bristlebacks, of course. Got to get rid of them if you want that embassy to take place. Well... Best get to it, hey? And off you go. Not so fast. You don't seem to have a high opinion of the Magistrate? Well, I refuse to play nice to some fancy-robed parchment pusher when my fellow laborers are being bullied, intimidated, and taken advantage of. How noble of you. Noble? Ha! Born with a hammer in hand, I was. Nobody handed me anything or dropped opportunity into my lap. Everything I've achieved, I've done on my own. And where is this hammer now? The, uh... Burden of leadership forced me to set it aside. The Karja risk nothing while demanding that good Osram gamble with their lives out there. Someone had to step up and say no more. You ordered the work stoppage? Indeed I did. We're laborers, not soldiers. Until the Karja clean up their mess and give us the fair deal we deserve, I'm not risking Osram lives. Fair deal? You mean your concession decree? It's not my decree. It's on behalf of all the good Osirum laborers of this land who do all the backbreaking work while only the Karja reap the rewards. All we're asking for is the ability to share in this prosperity for a land worked by the people for the people. Right. And just how much would be your share? Only an amount appropriate to my contributions to this community, uh, of course. If Chain Scrape is on Karja land, shouldn't a Karja be in charge? Who appointed you? The sensibilities of good Osram folk, of course. You think a Karja can head this whole venture? Ha! Ah! The Magistrate can barely make the trek from Baron Light without losing a few screws. So you have no real authority then. People only follow you because you say so. Loudly. Anyone who has followers has authority. I've been with Chain Scrape from the beginning. I mean, I'm practically its founder, and its honest folk know I'm indispensable to its success. You said you founded Chainscrape. Somehow I doubt that. Practically founded, I said. I alone saw its potential when it was just a smattering of tents in barren light shadow. I invested in the mine, convinced some friends back home to do the same, and here we are. You could say Chain Scrape is what it is, thanks to me. Oh, so you're not just standing around and profiting off everyone else? Not at all. Sure, I make a little return on my investment here and there, but my main priority, as it was from the beginning, is to look after the well-being of these honest, working Osram. Where's the whistle? Right in the middle of town, but with the threat out there, I'm not endangering innocent Osram lives. I'm going to clear out the bristlebacks. And when I'm done, this valley is going to get moving. If that's what it takes. 
Until then, I'll keep looking after the safety of these good folk. Just be ready to blow the whistle. Better see what that Karja magistrate wanted. I bet he's in the tavern. Still here, I see. I have other places to be. <laughs> By all means, don't let me stop you. Savior, thank you for taking the time, and my condolences that you had to endure all of us bloviating. I've dealt with worse. It sounds like he's really trying to put you over the barrel. The idea that the Karja purposely let Bristlebacks into the dawn, it's, it's completely absurd. But the louder and longer he says it, the more support he'll get for his damned concession decree. How did the Bristlebacks get into the Daunt? No one knows for sure. The first report of them came from west of the quarry. But unless they have wings I don't know about, I don't see how they could have come over the mountains. No other way in. The only way I know about is barren light. Look, if you can get to the bottom of this, I can offer a considerable bounty in return. Help me shut Olvent up. What is this concession decree that Olvind wants? He wants the Sundom to designate portions of the Daunt as Osaram holdings. Only the portions, mind you, that produce any value. Let me guess, because he stands to profit somehow? Exactly. With the Daunt under Osaram law, he could secure more investment for their numerous ventures. He can't get those investments without the concession? No. Not while there's a chance the Sundom could revoke their access. Hence, why the concession is so important to him. And why blaming the Karja for the Bristlebacks, no matter how absurd, works in his favor. How does blaming the Karja for the Bristlebacks help Olven get his concession? Look around. This may be the Sundom, but chain scrape is all gears and rust and bad ale. Claiming that the Karja loosed the Bristlebacks in order to intimidate Osaram laborers into obedience... Well... Let's just say no one here has forgotten the atrocities of the Mad Sun King. And with the Bristlebacks bringing work in the valley to a halt, Alvunt has plenty of time to pick at barely healed wounds. And if the Osaram refuse to work, unless the concession is signed, you won't have a choice. Correct. The reconstruction of Baron Light must continue. How did you get stuck out here? I asked for the posting, believe it or not. 
overseeing the entire valley on behalf of the Sun King? It was an honor. Is an honor, I mean. But your job would be a lot easier without someone like Ulvind blasting hot air all the time? Ulvind's not going anywhere. He's been around longer than I have. Even fancies himself the founder of Chainscrape. I'll find a way to live with him. I have to. You said the Bristlebacks were first spotted west of the quarry? Yes, according to one terrified laborer, said the ground trembled before they came charging down the hillside. He took off and ran all the way here. Good place to start looking, then. If you learn the truth, Maybe Ulvant will stop blaming the Karja for every problem under the sun, and maybe then he'll actually focus on rebuilding Baron Light instead. Yes, something else? I need to go. Of course. I'm drunk? Olven ah! can't just ignore us like this, can he? We almost died because of him. <laughs> Have you seen us? What are we supposed to do? Have Arnoff throw his crutch at him? I see you all made it back. Hammer and tongs. That they did, Huntress. They tell me you blasted through the problem. Lokuf here came back trembling like a twig. Hey! What's important is everyone made it out. No thanks to Olven. Have you talked to him yet? We're on the waiting list. Doesn't have the guts to face all of us at once. We need to stick together. In case he decides to send his goons over. You're all banged up as it is. I can deal with Olven. You don't need to stick around. We know, yelled Hammer. <laughs> Just stay safe. <laughs> what did you expect? Velma doesn't take any blackers. With his black. Ho there! Took you long enough. Oi, flag. I need to make this right. We will. Don't worry. You have to bring it up, huh? What?
<sighs> Refreshing, I guess. I can get data to override machines from cauldrons. Just need to find one.
stash this away for later. Scroungers. Might have said I could find a metal panel in one of their scrap piles. Could have hit acid. Stop it from shooting back.
think I have everything I need for Nobus. Good thing too. I can use a decent meal. I can grab this from my stash later.
know what we need. Proper survey. Ah, there you are. I happen to receive another visit from Olven himself. He was pushy, but I stood my ground. And dare I say it, I even got my own back. Yes, I did. I'm listening. When I made his meal, I used three pinches of salt. Instead of two. Uh, each journey begins with a single step, I guess. I think I have everything you asked for. Then just as you have inspired me, let us see if I can return the favor. Time to cook. Inspired. Next time you want the best provisions, you know where to find me. And your next order of any dish will be on the house. <laughs> Thanks. And don't forget to stand up for yourself. Funny you should say that. As it happens, I'm already cooking up my next portion of resistance. Hope to see you again. before I head back out. Back for that free meal? Go on, peruse my menu. Shop's closed, Red. You're welcome to use the workbench. Best I can do. You wanted to speak to me? Well, you know better than anyone it's a dangerous world out there, and not just against machines. Name's Odur. This here's my training pit. Best place to practice close combat this side of the Forbidden West. Say, I wonder who'd win in a fight? You, the savior of Meridian, champion of the East, or the enduring master of the West? Who? The Enduring, a legendary Tanakh fighter, the master of masters. I've heard the Tanakh have training pits just like this one. It's how the warriors get so fierce, see? And only the very best from the pits get to train with the Enduring. So to find the Enduring, I should look for these training pits if I'm ever out that way? You'll have to go far if you do. 
the Tanakhta split into three clans. Three clans, three capitals, three training pits. My guess is you'd have to beat all of them if you want to train with the Enduring. If the Tanakh don't kill you on sight, that is. But that's a far spark in the wind. As for right now, I also offer challenges to test your fighting skill. Who would I be fighting exactly? You? Well, I know you're the savior and all, but you have to beat all the others first to challenge me. Rules are rules. We only use dual blades and practice arrows, mind. These drunken fools would run themselves through otherwise. You have to leave everything but your spear and practice arrows at the gate. But I'll look after your gear, not to worry. So, what do you say? Up for some training? <laughs> I might be. That's what I like to hear. Think your spear can deal with that armor? Use attacks to energize your spear. Then hit your opponent with a heavy or power attack to blast the armor off. That energy doesn't last forever. That spear can give you the edge in battle. Keep energizing it and then your enemies. Triggering those energy blasts should help you vanquish your opponents. You did it! That spear of yours seems to energize after attacks. I think landing heavy attacks or combinations will energize it faster. Your enemy. 
See if you can energize them. You did it! Attacks are fast, but easily blocked. So learn to combine them with other attacks. The attacks break weapon blocks and do more damage. But they're slow, so your opponents might counterattack. Power attacks smash weapon blocks to really hammer an enemy with damage. But they're slow and leave you vulnerable, so pick your moment. That spear of yours seems to energize after attack. I think landing heavy attacks and combinations will energize faster. Now to use that energy, try attacking your enemy. See if you can energize them. This one goes to the Nora. Here to practice, friend. I set up some new training while you were gone. Hey! <laughs> 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 opponent, break their weapon block, then follow through to attack with this combination. same attacks, your enemy will dodge them. Vary your attacks and combinations. Make yourself less predictable. Pay attention to your opponent's stance. Read their intentions. Choose your attacks to break their defense.
plan and fix. <laughs> I yield! Well fought, friend. Well fought. Are you okay? Yeah. Ooh. Serves me right for thinking I could go up against the savior of Meridian. Here, have this. A little something for the new champion. Thank you, Hodark. Don't be a stranger now. Come back whenever you'd like to spar again. Okay, that's all for now, I think. Good luck out there. The bristleback's gonna run him down. Get inside until it's safe. Don't have to tell me. Oh, my pack's full. I can get it for my stash later. The signal my focus picked up is coming from that metal tower. Maybe I should check it out.
Looks like some sort of quarry. Hey girl, stay back! It's too dangerous! And it's you full of bristlebacks. Stay back! You'll get killed! Get out of there! Ain't safe in there. Machines will kill you. to override machines and cauldrons before. I wonder if there are any out here.
Incoming.
There. Quarry safe. Stranger, come on over here. We gotta talk. Javad said the bristlebacks were first spotted west of the quarry. I should see if there's anything in the back of the valley. Find this in my stash later. Nora's doing out here, but consider yourself old. We tried to hold off and wait for the vanguard, but one of them bristlebacks charged us. Next thing you know was a full-fledged fracas. Is everyone okay? We lost some good people, but we would have lost the whole quarry without you. Well, at least it's quiet now. Your ears ought to be ringing with a quarry at work, but chain scrapes whistle ain't blowing, so we're stuck picking up the pieces. You need the whistle to get back to work? Me and my crew were just little cogs out here. Can't lift a hammer till Olwen blows that thing. Because if we work without his say-so, he'll ban us. And my people have been through enough. Olwen holds that much power? He's got the money and connections to snuff our fires for good. Almost feels like we stood a better chance with the bristlebacks. What are you and your crew working on? We're supposed to be working Olven's claim, digging out stone to show our barren light. But the work stoppage and the bristlebacks cut us short. Never seen those blasted things in a dawn before. Where in Forge Fire did they come from? I'm not sure. At least not yet. I need to get going. Stay safe. Thanks to you, that might actually be possible today. I 
Lucky day. Take Russell back where the falls. Go check it out. It's strange. Parts of it have been tampered with. Almost like an override. It looks like it died on impact. Maybe it charged off the cliff up there. I better keep following the trail up. This will be in my stash when I need it. Another dead prison buck? This one's been tampered with, too. off the cliff above. I should keep going up the trail. An old mine. And a lot of broken trees. It's like a stampede went through. Is this where the bristlebacks came from? But how? Unless... This cave leads out of the daunt.
Okay. Let's see where this leads. Cart tracks collapsed. It looks recent. Guess I'm not going that way. There's smoke from deeper in the mine. Bristlebacks. So they did come through here. They must have gotten trapped. And I have to take them out before I can look around.
take a look at where the smoke's coming from. far back. There's a lot of blaze down there. There's enough blaze here to blast a mountain open. And there's a note on one of the barrels. It's addressed to Oldland. Looks like this mine was supposed to be shut down. But it must have gotten greedy. Kept blasting deeper into the mountain. So I should let your vod know what I found. Secretly blasted in the mine. Trying to squeeze it for all it's worth. Until Bristleback stampeded through. Maybe the explosions blew away open? My stash has room. Dead machines. And a trap. Looks like someone's been trying to keep this trail clear.
leave us alone. We have nothing for you. As surely as the sun sets in the west, our prayers will be answered. We must be patient. Well, where these people are, I guess they want to be left alone. Send this to my stash. Oh, this'll really boil their broth. I'll add a sprinkle of chili to their desserts. Help reverse. What news do you bring? Picked up the Bristleback Trail by the quarry. Looks like they stampeded out of a mine at the back of the valley. The mine? How could a herd of Bristlebacks come from there? I'm not sure, but Alvin's workers were using explosives to tap the tunnels inside. For the love of Dawn, I told him it wasn't worth the risk. 
Those tunnels, they run for miles underground, even beyond the daunt. No, you don't think. That Olven's blasting opened up a passage from the other side? Perhaps. Yes, perhaps. If this is true, we need confirmation. An inquiry. So thorough, so irrefutable, endorsed by the Savior. All right, I'll keep looking. I need to go. Of course. If I'm gonna find out where the bristlebacks came from, I need to have further rest. Another reason to get the embassy going? Well, look who's back. Hey, Ray. Fancy a game of strike. Come for another round? I gotta go, Petra. That you do. I'll keep the seat warm for you. Ah, come to revel in some strike, sister? Let me set the board. I was just passing by. I... Mm, first timer, huh? Don't worry about it. I'll go easy on you. You got any pieces? Uh, no. Well, aren't you in luck then? I got an extra set. A Tanakh original straight out of the Forbidden West. Sit, 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 sit. I'll run you through it in a hot spark. I'll give you something special if you win it on my boards, too. Start off simple. The Tanakh like to say that Machine Strike is a game of pure strategy. We each get a set of pieces. Each piece represents a kind of machine, and each machine is worth a different number of victory points. And to win the game, you'll need to gain seven victory points by destroying the opponent's machines. It can be tricky remembering the details of every machine, so we use these notes to keep track of them. You see that number on the top right corner? That there is how many victory points you'll get for destroying that machine. Notes also tell you how far a piece can move, how powerful their attacks are, the distance they can strike from, and of course, their health. Okay, that's enough for now. Let's just play. I'll explain the rest as we go. I own the board, so I get to choose who goes first. Since this is your first time, I'll let you go. Usually you get to choose which pieces to set on the board, but this will do for now. Pick up that machine piece to your right mm -hmm, and move it forward. And remember, each machine can only move a certain distance. Take a look at your notes if you need a reminder. Easy enough, huh? Now, you get to move two machines each round, so go ahead and pick a second machine. Perfect. There's not much else to do for now, so just end your turn. We're forging onwards. Let me move my pieces here. And we're back to you. This time, why don't you try attacking one of my pieces? Try with that machine on your right first. Now move the piece close. When performing an attack, you'll be testing your machine's combat power against the opponent's. A machine and its own attack power. This board only has grassland terrain, which has no effect on a machine's combat power. And your current machine has two points of attack power. So in total, your machine's combat power equals two points. Since my machine isn't the one attacking, it has zero points of attack power. And just like your machine, it's not affected by grassland terrain. So right now, 
the difference in combat power between the two machines is two points. This means your machine can do two points of damage to my machine. Did you get all that? Knew you were a smart one. Finish up by attacking my machine. Not pulling any punches, huh? Now grab that second machine of yours. See how your machine can't move close enough to attack mine? You can make your machine sprint. That lets it move one space further. Try it out. Downside to sprinting is that your machine can no longer attack. Now some players like to take a risk and overcharge their machine in cases like this. Overcharging lets you attack after a sprint, but it will damage your machine's health by two points. So use at your own discretion. Let's try doing that now so you can see what I mean. That's about it for your turn then. Now, I'll let you in on a neat trick. That machine of yours, the one closest to me, grab a hold of it. Same as in the wilds, machines have both armored points and weak points. You can see them marked on the pieces. Blue shows where their armor is thickest. Hit them there and you'll do some damage, but not a lot. Now, red shows the machine's weak points. Hit those and you'll deal a mighty blow. Here, let me show you. Rotate that piece so your machine faces mine. Now let that machine have it. Off the board she goes, and there's your first victory points. You don't have seven of them yet, so let's keep going. Your machine attacked mine, but hasn't moved yet. Go ahead and move downwards towards my remaining piece. You've already attacked a machine and moved your piece. But if you overcharge your machine, you can attack a second time. And by the look of your machine's health, you'd be sacrificing your piece to defeat mine but sometimes that can be a good thing. Overcharge your machine to attack mine a second time and I'll show you what I mean. Ain't that a thrill? Now, because your machine was knocked out at the same time as mine, we both get the victory points our machines are worth. Good news is, since you're the one attacking, you're gonna receive your victory points before I do, which means you can reach the coveted seven victory points first. That's why sometimes losing a piece can be the best way to end a game in your favor. Now, you'll notice you didn't get quite up to seven victory points this time, but you did destroy all my pieces. That means you're the winner. That wasn't so hard, was it? Just remember to always check for the best terrain to attack from. You'd be surprised the advantage you can gain over an opponent like that. I know it saved my behind in a game or two. I'll try and remember that. Oh, before I forget, these are all my spare pieces. I want the Savior of Meridian to have them. It's a small set to be sure, but it should be enough to get you in on any strike games you find out there. You might even fancy looking out for them strike carvers. They've got all kinds of unique pieces that can turn a game in your favor, though they'll need the right materials to craft you one. Or you might find them in the wilds if you're lucky. You know, I've lost my fair share of pieces after <laughs> night of machine hunting or brew hopping. <sighs> no need to thank me. Always a pleasure to help out new strike players. Now, if you feel like playing a real game, I've got plenty of other boards. I could even teach you a few more tricks if you're up for it. Thanks. I'll think about it. I knew I'd make a strike player out of you yet. How about this time I tell you how to use a board's terrain to your advantage? This one's got all the different terrains you can encounter in a game of strike. Knowing when and how to use them can mean the difference between victory and defeat. Terrain mainly affects your machine's combat power. 
As you know, when fighting an opponent's machine, you compare its combat power to yours. The higher your machine's combat power, the more damage you can do. So finding the right terrain is an essential strategy for overpowering your opponent. Here, I'll show you. Grab that piece to your left and move to attack my machines. Now let's take a look at your machine's combat power. Combat power is the sum of a machine's attack power and the value of the terrain it's standing on. Since your machine is attacking, it's using its two points of attack power. It's also standing on forest terrain with a value of one point. Add those together and your machine has three points of combat power. My machine is standing on grassland terrain with a value of zero points. It's also not attacking, which means their attack points aren't in play. So my combat power is zero. This means your machine can do three points of damage. Go ahead and test it out. There you go. Now, choosing the right terrain doesn't just improve your offense. It can also help defend your machines from attack. Grab your other piece and place it in front of my second machine. Since it's standing on grassland terrain, this terrain has a value of zero. This means your machine's combat power adds up to two points. My machine can't use their attack power since they're defending their position. But they have the higher ground. They're standing on forest terrain, which is worth one point. This means my combat power adds up to one point. Now, the front of my machine is colored blue. This means that the spot you're about to attack has armor protecting it, which means my machine gets an extra point, giving it a total of two combat power points. If we compare the combat power of both machines, you'll see that you won't be able to do any damage. Whenever you're unable to top an opponent's combat power, you can still choose to attack and break their machine's defenses instead. Go ahead, try it out and see what happens. When you break a machine's defenses, you can knock it backwards. Sure, both our machines will receive one point of damage, but knocking my machine off that terrain makes it more vulnerable to attacks. Not only that, if my machine had been blocked from moving backwards, it would have received an extra point of damage. And if my machine had been blocked by another one of my pieces, that machine would have received damage as well. That's why breaking a machine's defenses is a great way to deal damage to several pieces at once. Useful, right? Okay, now go ahead and end your turn. There's still one more thing I want to show you. All right, as we've seen, the higher the terrain, the more it'll add to your machine's combat power. However, there are two other terrains that work a little differently. This is what we call a chasm. Only flying machines can be placed on those. But it'll take away two combat points if you do, so be wary. This is marsh terrain. Landing on it will take away one combat power point from most machines. It'll also keep your machine from moving for the rest of the turn. Here, let me show you. Grab that machine on your left. See? All you can do now is wait for your next turn to move again. Or you can overcharge your machine to get out of there. You can still attack any nearby enemies so you're not completely helpless. Well, I think that's enough yammering for me for now. Promise it'll all come in handy next time you play. Here for more tips? Why don't I tell you a bit more about the pieces we used to play? In a normal game, you get to choose which machines you place on the board. Each one is worth a certain number of setup points, and you can spend up to 10 assembling your army. 
Knowing what each machine brings to the game and building an army that matches your strategy is the key to becoming a machine strike master. When assembling your army, there are a few things to keep in mind. First and foremost, you can never have more than four of the same machine on the board at the same time. With that in mind, most players will choose machines based on how far they can move or how much attack power they have. But a real strike player will be looking at a machine's type and skills. Let's take a quick look, shall we? Pick up that machine on your left. All right, let's talk about the different ways in which a machine attacks its opponents. In other words, its machine type. If you look at your notes, you'll see this machine here is a melee type. You can also tell by the shape of the base the piece stands on. A melee type machine attacks the first enemy within range and no one else. We've seen this plenty of times, so just move that piece forward so I can show you some more stuff. Great, now grab your other machine. Looks like we've got ourselves a gunner type machine here. This means they'll only hit the farthest enemy in their attack range. Let's move that machine forward and end your turn so we can take a look at the rest of the pieces. Let's go with this piece first. This is a ram type machine. Attack an enemy with it and it'll push the piece backwards. Like this. See, now my machine has taken over your machine spot on the board. This is a great way to take the advantage away from your opponent if they have the higher ground. Looks like we have one more piece to look at. Now this is a beauty of a piece, a dash type machine. When it attacks, it'll move to the end of its attack range and damage every machine in its path, including your own. So make sure you take a good look at the board before you send it off to the races. You should also make sure it's able to finish its attack on an empty spot. Otherwise, you won't be able to attack at all. Here, I'll show you. Look, it even rotated your piece, a nifty little piece you'll definitely want in your set. If you look at your notes, you'll notice this particular machine has one of the skills I mentioned before. There's quite a few of those, and we haven't even looked at all the machine types yet. But I'm pretty sure you've got more important things to do, so I made you a list. It's got all the tips and tricks we talked about, too. I think that about does it for now, so if you want to play a real game, just let me know. This is gonna be fun. to make my move. That's it for me. ahead of me. Time to get serious. Armor is your best friend in this game, I'm telling you. <laughs> Looks like I lost. <laughs>
Your move, Red. You're up, Red. It's all yours. Turn. What a hit! Ah, off the board it goes. Well, that's done now. That was impressive. Your turn. That was brutal. Get serious. Not looking good for you, Red. <sighs> Knocked right off the board. Time to make my move. You're up, Red. Oh, I thought I had that one. Here we go. Your move, Red.
my turn. Board's all yours. Less piece on the board. That was a surprise. That's done now. Ah, off the board it goes. That's it for me. One less piece on the board. My turn. That's it for me. Get serious. Ah, knocked right off the board. You're up, Red. That was brutal. That's the game. You up for a rematch? Good luck. Your move, Red. Time to get serious. Board's all yours. That was brutal. Ah, 
knocked right off the board. Well, that's done now. Time to make my move. Your turn. Or move red. My turn. One less piece on the board. Board's all yours. Ah, off the board it goes. Knocked right off the board. That was brutal. I won! Oh, but I'll play you again if you want. Let's play! You're up, Red. Okay, let's see. Your turn. Time to get serious. Well, that's done now. That's it for me. One less 
piece on the board. Where it goes. Ah, off the board it goes. Knocked right off the board. Well, that's done now. Time to make my move. You're up, Red. It's all yours. Just one piece left. Time to make my move. Just one piece left. That sure dampens the forge. Okay, let's see. Guess luck's not on your side today, Red. Let's play! Your move, Red. One less piece on the board. Time to get serious. Yes!
That was brutal. One less piece on the board. Where it goes. That's it for me. Your turn. Knocked right off the board. Well, that's done now. My turn. Oh, I won! Probably shouldn't sound so surprised, huh? This is going to be fun. You're up, Red. Time to make my move. That's it for me. Where it goes.
Well, that's done now. I'm up. Board's all yours. One less piece on the board. Time to get serious. Your turn. My turn. Well, that's done now. One less piece on the board. Where it goes. You got me. Fair and square. Good luck. Okay, let's see. Your move, Red.
time to make my move. Nice! <sighs> Knocked right off the board. That's it for me. That was brutal. Okay, let's see. Your turn. It's all yours. Looks like you're down to one piece. Good red. Time to get serious. Your move, red. Okay. You're up, Red. Time to make my move. Only one machine left. Well, spark my forge. You have beaten me on every one of my boards. Now that deserves a prize, I said. Don't be a stranger.
that can't you see I'm trying to drink here? What's wrong with what you think I do? from my stash when I need it. There's an old watchtower at the top of that cliff. 
wonder if there's anything still inside. <gasps> Looks like the path out broke a long time ago. I'm gonna have to climb. Useful for making dyes. Made it. And there's another one of those devices. Nuns. Guess I'll figure out what to do with it later.
Who's who's doing it against it? Let this stain my hands. up this cliff. I wonder if there's anything interesting at the top.
Karja Watchtower. I don't know what's inside. Almost there. Made it. And there's another one of those devices. The lens. Guess I'll figure out what to do with it later. to feel my legs again if you don't mind, Savior. I don't think it'll connect. Get you out, don't worry. Mighty thankful to you, Savior. Just Aloy is fine. Aaron mentioned you're not one for fancy titles. You're Vanguard. Well, here to escort Vardis' delicate behind to the embassy. If we can get rid of these bristlebacks. Captain said to keep an eye on Chainscrape, then these ugly lugs showed up. Gave the first one a good beating. But didn't quite have time to roll out of the way when it fell. Told you it wasn't a good idea to eat that much before heading out. I should probably get going. <laughs> You know where I can find Erend? Captain went chasing after more bristlebacks further west. Just follow the sound of cursing and you'll find them. Now, if you see any more of these bristlebacks... I'll make sure to roll out of their way. Might want to take some of these with you as well. They're handy in a pinch. Thanks. Stay safe, Aloy. from the old world. Looks like some kind of building in front of sheer cliffs. The image is incomplete. But maybe if I line it up exactly with where it was taken, my focus can fill in the rest.
Looks like the building in the image might have been near a river. Maybe there used to be a bridge nearby? That's right. I better keep looking. Except the building in the image might have been near a river. Maybe there used to be a bridge nearby? of a bridge. Maybe it's the same one from the image. I could try to line it up around here. That did it. Oh. Completing the image unlocked a data file. It looks like these Vista points were made by... <sighs> Miriam Technologies. That was Elizabeth's company. I wonder if I can find more of them out in the wild.
some ruin from the old world. But I could find something interesting inside. Looks like this door needs some kind of key module. Maybe there's one in the ruin? Stuff for the stash. What's this data say? There's a code for the locked door in this data. But I still need to find a key module.
Spellcaster won't work on that. A crate. That should be useful. Hmm. Haven't found a key module. Maybe I should take another look around. Okay, gotta find a key for the door. Can't hook onto that. Can't reach the ledge above now. Guess I'll have to find another way up.
Be calm, something. There's nothing for my poor caster to latch on to. Suck. Try another angle. No more light down here. Sweet. Let's 
see if this key fits. There. Um, looks like this needs a code, too. I think some of the data I picked up might help. my stash later. <laughs> what is this thing? Guess I'll hold on to it for now. I'll use for it later. Back up. Try again. Must be
thanks, Phil, but my stash has room. 